to um, uh, start to be able to record. So the session is being recorded, but really just to be able to share the content, um, obviously anything that is shared in terms of personal things and things like that, we will not be sharing that. But I will go ahead and get started. I'm sure there will be students who will pop it, be popping in and out of the session. So definitely something to be mindful of. But again, hello to all of our um, admitted students. And we're excited to be here with you all on behalf of the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Rainbow Resource Center. So I have a quick presentation for you all. And then also you'll be able to hear from our amazing, some of our amazing student inclusion educators who work for us, for us here in the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Rainbow Resource Center. So I'm Dr. Joanna Thompson, the, the director of the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Rainbow Resource Center. My pronouns are she, her, hers, or they, them, theirs. And again, it's nice to be able to virtually see you all and welcome you as our BIPOC and LGBTQ plus students to Santa Clara University. So in order to get started, just to be able to share a little bit about who we are, what we do, there's a lot of acronyms on your screen, so apologies for any confusion. <laughs> it is kind of confusing with so many letters and so many different offices, but the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Rainbow Resource Center are part of the newly formed Division of Inclusive Excellence, or Inclusive Excellence Division, however you would like to call it, to be able to really focus on issues of social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion for our campus community here at Santa Clara. Both of our offices, although it sounds like we're two different offices, we are one indeed one office. We just have two target populations and our work looks a little bit different depending upon what office you're talking about. So both, both sides of the house, as we like to say, uh, focus on work around identity development. The Office for Multicultural Learning focuses on identity development as it relates to race, gender, or excuse me, race, class, heritage, ethnicity, culture, and tradition, whereas the Rainbow Resource Center is all things LGBTQ+, so really looking at gender identity, gender expression, um, sexuality, and being able to support all of our queer folks on campus and our allies who do a lot of great work as well. So we work in collaboration with each other because we are indeed one office, but we also have a lot of other great collab collaborators across campus, most notably the Multicultural Center or the MCC. And they are a student-led organization under our Center for Student Involvement that holds currently 14 active student clubs that represents a variety of different identities, whether it's racial, ethnic, gender-based, an intersectional group, um, and really an awesome group to be able to work with in this work. So all of our, our offices and clubs and groups all operate together um, and we all are a part of this new inclusive excellence division so it's really great to be able to have not only student representation but staff and faculty representation as well. And so in our office, we have a professional staff team of two and a half. I say two and a half because one of the faces on your screen, Pauline Nguyen, works half time in our office as our office manager and then half time in the Department of Ethnic Studies, which is an academic unit here at SCU. So if you're interested in learning more about that major, uh, we're definitely happy to get you to connected to Pauline. My co-conspirator in all of this work is the man in the middle of the screen, Mr. Brunel Neville, who is our assistant director in the Office for Multicultural Learning in the Rainbow Resource Center. And then of course myself. And so you have our professional staff team. We're a small team, but a mighty team in getting all of the work done that we do for our office. And honestly, we couldn't do everything that we do without our student staff, also known as our student inclusion educators, which three of them are here today, Grace, Naomi, and Mahek. But we have in total uh, nine currently active student inclusion educators. So four in the Office for Multicultural Learning and five in the Rainbow Resource Center. And let me go ahead and admit this person. Awesome. And so we have, um, you'll see five listed in OML. One of our student inclusion educators, Chi, has actually graduated, but always um, an alumni and a favorite in the Office for Multicultural Learning. We also have a graduate student who works for us in OML, Hannah. Um, so for any graduate students who may want to get involved or if you know, or if you're interested in graduate school at some point in your career here at Santa Clara, we'd love to get you connected. And then as you can see in the Rainbow Resource Center, we have another set of five students, Jacob, Ezra, Valeria, and Omar who are undergraduate students. And then Anissa who is our graduate student in the Rainbow Resource Center. But again, you'll get to hear more about um, the student experience from our student inclusion educators in just a couple of minutes. 
And so when we think about the values that really guide our work in OML and the RRC, we like to have our set of three C's. Now these are different than the institution's three C's. We like to say that ours are a little bit better, but our three C's are celebrate, contemplate, and commit. And all of these C's really truly are not only our values, but help shape the work that we do in order to best support our BIPOC and LGBTQ plus students. Also, a lot of the events and offerings that we offer really fall under one of these umbrellas, so to speak. So currently we're actually in our celebrate quarter where a lot of our programs and offerings are truly in that like end of the year phase where we're really just starting to celebrate our students, celebrate our graduating students, and just celebrate the fact that we've made it through another year together. But again, also we have our contemplate and commit quarters um, and programs and activities to be able to engage in that sense of contemplation and to make sure that we are committing to the work of social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as we work through what the Office for Multicultural Learning really stands for, our mission statement is pretty simple. We're here to support diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, based upon practices and programming. And really, it truly is an everyday practice for us here in OML. A more thorough answer, which is really just our mission statement outlined, is that, again, as part of the Division of Inclusive Excellence, we really serve and seek to promote social justice, build bridges across diverse communities here at Santa Clara, and of course, celebrate the differences of everyone here in our community. And of course, we advocate for historically underrepresented populations and educate the whole person within the context of Jesuit values. Now, on the other side of the house, uh, or excuse me, when we think about uh, what OML does, again, under those values of contemplate, commit, and celebrate, for Contemplate, it is anything from our signature programs like Difficult Dialogues, where we really tackle hard-hitting topics that are impacting our community locally, nationally, and globally, to making that commitment with racial justice workshops where we engage in that ongoing commitment and education and collaborate and collaboration to celebrating, whether it's Heritage Months, Awareness Days, again, our, our um, mentorship programs, to be able to uplift and affirm the communities that we have here at SCU. Now on the other side of the house, the Rainbow Resource Center, similar mission statement, very similar cadence in terms of supporting our LGBTQ plus community here at Santa Clara University and truly working to educate, empower, and celebrate the experiences and the identities of all of our queer folks here on campus by educating, maintaining, affirming inclusive uh, space and welcoming environment for all those who identify under the wide spectrum of sexual and gender identities and expressions. So again, similar to the work in the the office for multicultural learning because we are one office we contemplate and commit through a variety of um, uh, uh, programs that we offer trainings that we offer and then that moment of celebration through our mentorship programs and our end of the year celebrations Currently, we're also working to make sure that our student voices are amplified. And it's been so exciting, especially as the director of this office, to be able to see this flourish this year. So this year, we have, uh, I guess, kicked off two new weekly newsletters that were created by our student inclusion educators, the Multicultural Agenda in the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Gay Agenda in the Rainbow Resource Center. So if you are looking forward to hopefully coming to Santa Clara in the fall, you will most likely see these in your inboxes to be able to learn a little bit more, not only about the work that we do, but upcoming programs that are related to BIPOC and LGBTQ plus folks. And then we also have a podcast called Word on the Street, which you can already listen to, and we'll make sure to share some of that information at the end. So feel free to be able to start listening to those episodes to get engaged with our campus community. And if you want to be able to be a part of our podcast in the future, once you get to campus in the fall, we would love to have you involved. In addition to that, we have a variety of programs that we offer, again, from our racial justice workshops to be able to promote that education around BIPOC and LGBTQ plus issues, our digital difficult dialogues, which is truly a senior program, a signature program in our office where we again tackle really hard hitting topics that are impacting our communities to more of those celebrations of awareness days, collaborating with student groups and organizations and departments across campus to again uplift and affirm the diversity that we have here at SEU. And then on the RRC side of the house, again, very similar digital difficult dialogues, mentorship programs, awareness days and safe space trainings, and some fun with our queer craft corner because not everything always needs to be like super educational. Also, it's nice to just be with your people and have social time as well.
And so as we close out kind of this more formal part of the presentation, we'd love to get connected with you, whether it's now, whether it's by the end of the quarter, over the summer, by the time you get to campus, we're more than happy to be able to meet you in person or meet you on Zoom if you are uh, not local. And of course, we'd love you to just get engaged with our office on our Spotify and our social media accounts. So you'll see here on your screen that there are the physical locations of our office. So if you're ever on campus, feel free to visit the Office for Multicultural Learning at 832 Market Street or a little house right off campus or the Rainbow Resource Center, which is located in the Benson Memorial Center right in the middle of campus, which is located in room 11. And then our social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook. And then we also have email addresses where it not only goes to all of the professional staff, but all of the student staff as well, in case you have questions or need any help in terms of getting ready to come to Santa Clara in the fall. And then of course, our Spotify accounts with our podcast and also some really awesome music playlists that are curated by our assistant director, Brunel Neville. So with that being said, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just so that we can see everybody's faces. And maybe what we can do is have our student inclusion educators just go around and introduce themselves and maybe just share a little bit about what it's like to be a BIPOC student here at Santa Clara and how OML has helped you uh, throughout your time here at SCU. So I'm gonna start with Grace because you're first on my screen and then we'll just go around. Hi everyone, my name is Grace Evans. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a third year political science and ethnic studies double major um, here at SCU. And my story is a bit unique. Um, one of my bosses, Brunel, who you saw a photo of just a minute ago, likes to describe it um, <laughs> whenever he introduces me. And it's because I was hired at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, but I didn't get to start physically in person at the office um, until this past, no, this year, <laughs> this winter. Um, so it was a long process of, you know, being related to OML and seeing the work they were doing, but not actually getting to do the work until this January. But now that I'm here, I am absolutely loving it. I'm in the office right now. Um, here's a little sneak peek. <laughs> it's very colorful. We've got lots of stuff on the board. Um, it's a very happy place to be. And I love OML. One of the reasons why I love OML is because I've get, gotten to connect with so many groups around campus in ways that I hadn't previously. I was a member of Together for Ladies of Color, which is a part of the MCC. And in that role, I was able to connect with other MCC orgs. But this role in particular has empowered me to reach out to not just student organizations, but also different faculty and staff around campus in order to collaborate. I'm working on a program right now with the Wellness Center, which is across the street with their peer health educators and violence prevention educators. And those are people that I truly probably would not be connecting with if it weren't for this role. So that's a little bit why, about why I love OML. Um, and I think Naomi is next, at least on my screen. <laughs> Thank you for the intro. Um, so hi, my name is Naomi Yang. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I am a second year. I'm currently studying sociology and political science. So um, I guess like my position in Office for Multicultural Learning is like very much aligned with like kind of my professional career path. Um, so my story is also kind of interesting because obviously um, I'm like an Asian woman. So I have the, the BIPOC experience at SCU, but also the fact that um, I'm an international student. Uh, well, I guess not international, but I guess like their culture because I'm a US citizen, but I have never lived in the United States prior to very recently. I grew up in Shanghai, China. So moving to Santa Clara, moving to the US in general was a really big culture shock for me. And it definitely took me a lot of adjusting to get used to. Um, I'm like very involved on campus, whether I was an orientation leader, I'm going to be a community facilitator next year. Um, I'm involved in a few other things on campus, but I feel like definitely the OML has definitely helped me to kind of work on like self-development in terms of like what I want to do in my professional career, but also just helping me be in contact with other communities on campus who celebrate the same like values and like cultural backgrounds that I do. So yeah, the OML is a very special place in my heart as international and a BIPOC student here at SCU. Um, thank you both. And Mahak. Hi everyone, my name is Mahek. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am a third year studying management with a minor in ethnic studies. So I just started working for the OML this year as well. And honestly, um, for admitted students, um, SCU is 
you know, it's a big institution and it's one where if you are a BIPOC student or you are a queer student, in my experience, it took me a little bit of time to find where I fit in and where my place is on campus. Um, but I really think that taking advantage of resources like the OML and the MCC has absolutely shaped my experience here. And I feel since I've come back to campus and really dialed into those resources, like my experience at SCU has been totally changed. It's really given me channels to explore my passions for social justice and diversity and inclusion and work towards making SCU more of an equitable place. Um, and so for admitted students, I would say if and when you do decide to come to SCU, this is absolutely a place for you and the OML and the MCC and all of these resources will provide community and support and I would absolutely encourage everyone to take advantage of them as soon as possible because that will make your experience here so much better. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing a little bit more about yourselves and a little bit more about how OML has brought some joy into your life. <laughs> and thank you all for the work that you do in OML. Um, one of the other things, again, thinking through what it feels like to be a BIPOC, queer, intersectional being on this campus, maybe what are some other resources that you'd like to share with students or maybe just other like words of wisdom that you would share um, from things that you've learned for being a, a, a marginalized student here at SCU? And anybody can start off to answer that question. I would say, honestly, dialing into professors that you feel a connection with as soon as possible. I know within the ethnic studies department, all of my professors so far have been so supportive and so encouraging and always an open and available resource for me. And because SCU is a smaller school, um, they're more than ready to give you face time and give you time and energy and resources to help you with whether it's career development or just academic exploration giving you advice um personal advice even like i really have found that when i lean into my professors um, who look like me and see the same things in our world that I do, I get a lot out of it. And they are connections that definitely will serve me for longer than my time here at SCU. Thank you, Mahek. Grace and Naomi, maybe other like resources or words of wisdom for BIPOC and LGBTQ plus students who, um, you know, to navigate Santa Clara. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, kind of going off of my own experiences here, one of the first things I did and the, one of the first things I felt that I needed to do was to find a group or a community that identified in the same way that I did racially. So because I identify as a biracial Black woman, the first group I sought out was EWAY, which is the Black Student Union, um, and then Together for Ladies of Color, which I've talked a bit about already. Um, and while both of those groups are wonderful in their own ways and I've found a great amount of community in them. I think something that tends to get overlooked, especially if we're talking about intersectionality, is other aspects of our identity. So if you're queer, maybe going to the Rainbow Resource Center. If you identify as first generation, working out communities with LEAD, there are lots of different facets to our identities. And I think one of the first things that incoming first years both in my experience and in my friend's experience tend to do is simply to find that racial group that you identify with. Um, and I think it can be very beneficial to look to other groups as well so that you are well-rounded and you are not limiting yourself just to one experience. Um, I have the privilege to help lead Embrace sessions, which if you come to Santa Clara, you will go through in your first year. And one of my students um, the other day was telling me that she only hangs out with, um, she identifies as an Asian woman. She only hangs out with other Asian women and particularly other East Asian women. And she mentioned that while she's found a great sense of community there, that she would like to get involved with other communities. And I heard that because I had a very similar experience freshman year. So my advice to you um, as hopefully incoming SCU students would be to seek out, and whether you come to SCU or whether you go to another university, I really encourage you to seek out a variety of different groups, um, could be clubs, organizations, 
how you make friends um, that are from different parts of your identity instead of just one, um, because I think that it will enrich your experience. Um, it certainly has for me. <laughs> yeah, um, and to add on to that, I think a really good perk, at least for like SCU, is that for our multicultural clubs and organizations, they're as like time commitment heavy as you want it to be like there's no sort of like commitments like just because you go to one meeting it doesn't mean you're automatically like part of like the every single like weekly meeting like schedule like just like same case as oml like if you come to one of our events it doesn't mean that you automatically have to come to every single program that we have to put on so i think this kind of framework really allows people to kind of um, experience different like cultural clubs, different like international student settings without having to like fully engage with it just because obviously if you are coming to SCU as like a freshman or just as a first time or you want to experience as many things as possible. So these things are as like, like I guess time consuming as you want it to be. So like there's no pressure if you want to try something new, but also if you do find a community that really suits you, you can just devote yourself to it. Um, so I think it's a really good plus about how Santa Clara sets up its like MCC clubs and things like that. Awesome, yeah, thank you all for sharing the, those words of wisdom. Knowing that you know our admitted students will be hopefully joining us in the fall, what are some things that you all are looking forward to either the end of this year or even just thinking about next year? Like what are some things you're looking forward to? Well, for me, this is my very first spring quarter on campus. So it's already turning into a busy, busy quarter. Something to look forward to for sure is culture shows. Every MCC group will, or I think most, I don't know if all, will put on a culture show where they just display music and dance and food and art and all the things um, within all their respective cultures. And I'm so excited to be attending my first ones like in person and be performing in some of them. And I think they're just gonna be so fun and so wholesome. And I can't wait for that specifically. I'm also so excited. It's also my first spring quarter here at SCU. I spent about two hours outside today in Mission Gardens, which is newly my favorite place on this campus. Everything is blooming. It's gorgeous. Um, so I highly recommend if you are able to visit campus that you check out Mission Gardens. It's kind of tucked away, a bit hidden away. Today was my first time exploring it fully, but it's wonderful. Um, so in addition to everything blooming and people being seemingly in good spirits walking around campus. I'm really looking forward to, like Mahek was saying, um, all of the culture shows this quarter and the MCC, the Multicultural Center puts on something called Global Village every spring quarter as well. And that's kind of a celebration of all things cultural and all of the different MCC student run organizations table and there are performances by students and it's a wonderful time. So I'm really looking forward to that being in person this year. Yeah, I think you'll start to notice a trend that because SCU is like a smaller school size, I guess like in relativity to say like a bigger UC school, there's definitely a very like tight knit community. Um, I think I was an orientation leader and like if you ask like nine, like nine out of 10 students like what their favorite part of SCU is, they'll always say it's like, it's the community. It's like the friends that they found on campus. It's the community that they've established through like XYZ organization or club. And I think you really start to see that um, when it comes to like spring quarter, when like MCC clubs have their culture shows or just like when, I guess when the school goes through like periods of like hardship, but like, um, like for example, like if someone a community passes away, like everyone really hurts. And it's like, you definitely see a very strong community there. Um, so I think that's just like something that I really enjoy about Santa Clara, just like the tight knit community. And I know we only have about five more minutes left. I want to end on like uh, an upbeat question, knowing that, of course, our students are here to be able to go to class and get a degree, but there's so many other things that you can do, right? And we've talked about extracurriculars and joining clubs and things like that. What are some things that you all have done off campus, maybe in the local Bay Area community that you'd like to share with our admitted students? That's a great question that I don't feel qualified to answer simply because the pandemic had me living in my hometown of Austin, Texas for two years. Um, I've 
spent about six months ish on campus in my three years here. Um, so I haven't actually gotten out into the local community as much as I would like to. Um, but I've heard that in particular, San Jose has some excellent food. And that's something that I really want to check out this quarter. Well, I am from the Bay. And so I've been here forever. So I think for me, it's been really fun to like show my friends around where my favorite places are in San Jose or Santa Cruz down going to the beach, even going to the city. Um, so if anyone, Grace or anyone ever needs food recommendations, definitely let me know and I can take us out. Yeah, I feel like we're definitely in a good location because we are like, we are close enough to the city, but also um, like Mahek said, it's like Santa Cruz, but I guess like more locally speaking, I know like the farmer's market on Saturday is like really popular. Um, that's like a 10 minute walk away from campus. I know we have like the rose gardens that are like, especially in bloom and during spring. Um, but like, yeah, I really like four mile beach in Santa Cruz. It's like not that bad of a drive. Uh, like I've been to like SF MoMA. So those are just like some cool like exploration sites that are like relatively closer to campus. And that's just like a really great way to just kind of like be a part of like, like I guess the bigger community. Yeah, awesome. Well, at that point, I think it's good to be able to maybe start to wrap up. I know we just have a couple minutes. Um, for the student who is currently all logged on, if you'd have any questions for us, feel free to pop them in the chat or raise your hand. Um, but thank you to all, including those who may watch this recording for <laughs> logging on and learning a little bit more about the Office for Multicultural Learning and the Rainbow Resource Center. And of course, thank you to our awesome student inclusion educators, Grace, Naomi, and Mahek for joining us this afternoon. I'm going to stop